If we're going to simplify some radical expressions that have some variables in them like these, cube root of n to the fourth, well, one good trick that we can use is to turn it into rational exponents. Remember, when we have a cubed root and an n to the twelfth, the power is the numerator and the root is the denominator. Uh, looking at it as a rational exponent, now we can divide 12 divided by 3 and get 4. For the cubed root of n to the tenth, uh, we could try the same trick and remember that the power is the numerator and the root is the denominator. The 10 divided by 3 doesn't really simplify. Um, so maybe we go back to looking at it as a cubed root of 10. And 10, we can break up into groups of 3. For instance, n to the third times n to the third times n to the third. That gives us 9 n's. We'll need one more to make 10. Each one of these can cancel with uh, the third root. So the cube root of n to the third is n. And the cube root of n to the third is n. And the cube root of n to the third is n. But the cube root of n is just going to stay the cube root of n. So rewriting all of these is just n cubed times the cube root of n gives us a simplified expression. Um, in part c, we have w to the 7 halves. We can uh, turn that into um, a radical in, in a similar way if we wanted to go with uh, the square root of w to the seventh and then take out groups of, in this case, two. We can take out three groups of two and we will have one left over. Another way that we could look at this, and we could have done this in the last example as well, is, is to look at w to the seven halves. Seven halves is three and one half. 3 and 1 half, that's 3 plus 1 half, so we could break that up into w to the third times w to the 1 half. As a mixed number, that power splits up into two parts. This w to the third is the part that will be outside of a square root, and the w to the 1 half, that's what's inside the square root. Rational exponents follow the same rules as every other exponent. So if I'm going to divide two exponents, all I have to do is subtract their powers. So when we have w to the 7 halves divided by w to the 1 half, all we have to do is take that 7 halves and subtract 1 half. 7 halves minus 1 half, of course, is 6 halves, and that will simplify to w to the 3rd. When we see a power raised to another power, what we're supposed to do is multiply those powers together. So w to the 7 halves to the 4 thirds means we take 7 halves and multiply it by 4 thirds. Of course, this will simplify into w to the 14 thirds. Then we can use that trick of rewriting that power as a mixed number. 14 divided by 3 is 4 with 2 thirds left over. That means uh, the simplified radical expression as a radical is w to the 4th, times w to the 2 thirds, and that 2 thirds is the part that can get written as a radical. Remember, the numerator is the power, and the denominator is the root. So w to the 4th times w squared. And then if we see an exponent multiplied by an exponent, we need to add the powers. So w to the 7 halves plus 5 halves. Adding those two together, we'll have 12 halves which ends up being w to the sixth. In this next set, what we need to do is to combine like radicals. Uh, in part g, we have one square root of three, and we're going to subtract five square roots of three, so one minus five is negative four square roots of three. But in part h, it doesn't look like anything is alike. So our first step is to go through and simplify each root on its own. Well, square root of five can't simplify. But square root of 20 is 4 times 5, and the square root of 49 is, or 45 is 9 times 5. Each of those uh, last two can be simplified because the square root of 4 is 2, square root of 5 stays square root of 5. Square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 5 stays the square root of 5. Now it's just a matter of combining like terms. We have 1 square root of 5 plus 2 square roots of 5 make 3 square roots of 5. 
and we're going to subtract 3 square roots of 5. So 3 square root of 5 minus 3 square root of 5 is 0. For multiplying, we follow the same rules uh, that we did when we were dealing with polynomials. So if I have square root of 7 times 3 plus 2 root 7, I'm going to take this root 7 and distribute it, which means 3 gets multiplied by the square root of 7, and 2 root 7 gets multiplied by the square root of 7. 3 root 7 is already simplified, so we can leave it like that. But root 7 times root 7 makes root 49, and the square root of 49 is 7. So this 2 gets multiplied by 7, and it'll simplify to 3 square root of 7 plus 14. If we have two binomials, we're going to have to FOIL them. So we'll distribute the 5 first. You give us 25 minus 5 root 2. Then uh, we'll distribute the square root of 2. And that'll be plus 5 square root of 2 minus square root of 2 times square root of 2. Of course, the two terms in the middle will cancel each other out, and we'll have 25 minus the square root of 4. Of course, square root of 4 is 2, and 25 minus 2 makes 23. Finally, when it comes to uh, getting the root out of the denominator, when there's a binomial down there, is that we're going to have to multiply by the conjugate, that 9 plus the square root of 2, in the numerator and the denominator. What that's going to mean is in the numerator, we have to distribute 27 plus 3 square root of 2. But in the denominator, because we multiply by conjugates, What's going to happen is those two middle terms are going to cancel each other out, just like they did in the last one. So we can be a little bit quicker about it and just do 9 times 9 and get 81. We know that when we do the outsides, here we'll get plus 9 root 2, and then the insides will give us minus 9 root 2. And that's what I'm talking about. Those two will cancel. So uh, to finish up the denominator, we'll have to do minus the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 4. So our numerator, there's nothing really more that we can do with that for right now. But in the denominator, we can take 81 minus 2 and get 79. Since 79 is prime, there's our solution.